Let's skip right to the good stuff. You know traditionally, a custom PC is the de facto method that we would choose when going for a gaming PC because most pre-built used cheap parts and they're overpriced and it's just not good value for the performance that you're getting. But does the Anthem from light gaming PCs change that for the better? <laughs> I'm sold. And I think you will be too by the end of this video. In a little bit, I'm gonna be talking about two really incredible features that light gaming PCs offer that I know for a fact no other pre-built companies offer. Just trust me, you're gonna to wanna to stick around. So this is the $2,000 pre-built Anthem from light gaming PCs. The PC features an i7-12700F CPU, 16 gigabytes of DDR4 3200 Kingston Fury Beast RAM, an NVIDIA 4070 Ti, a one terabyte NVMe drive and a one terabyte hard drive, an Asus Prime B660M D4 motherboard, a 750 watt gigabyte 80 plus gold power supply, a deep cool 240 millimeter AIO, all inside the Vitro Mesh 7 RGB case. Super beefy PC, there's no doubt about that. Now one of the best part of light gaming PC's build process is that they clearly use high quality parts, but they also don't oversell them. They charge you exactly what you would pay if you bought those parts yourself, and then they just slap a $100 build fee on top of it. Now I know what you're thinking. That just sounds too good to be true. And I obviously thought the same thing. So let's head over to PC Part Picker, input all the parts as listed on their website, and see what we come up with and how close the dollar amount actually is. All right, come on, I'm actually excited for this. Now prices do change, of course, so there might be a little bit of fluctuation, but I think it's gonna be pretty close. So I've skipped ahead and I've put everything into PC Part Picker. Here is a side-by-side -side with what they list on their website and what I have inputted in here. You can put it in for yourself so you know this is legit $30, $30. So we know they're legit and they're true to their word that they're not charging you more for the parts than you could just go and buy them yourself. Let's get this thing unboxed. <sighs> That thing is beefy, I'm not gonna lie. So if you can't tell, it's a big box in an even bigger box. Nice light gaming PC branding on there. Let's see what the shipping and packaging is like. Need my trusty box cutter, broken M.2. All right, had to throw sandals on so you guys don't get a free show. Inside, we get power supply cables. Antenna, manuals, and other things. Lots of bubble wrap. That's a good sign. And I'm gonna guess underneath all this is the actual PC case, sure enough. There we go, the original Vitro RGB case. Welcome to your new home for a while. You just stay there. Let's see if I can safely get the PC out of the box. Yes, I can. Lots of protection on the PC itself with two styrofoam panels on the side. Of course, we get a little cover to keep it dust free. Quick little inspection, the glass isn't broken, obviously that's good. You get like a little manual in here, we'll check that out. Everything looking good on the front. So it's pretty unique in the fact that you have to take off this top part here, unscrew this and slide it. And then you just slide up on this and these little knobs slide into the grooves on the case. We get our quick start guide, very nice. I won't be using that, but some people might find that very handy. Instapack foam packaging, moment of truth here. All right, everything looks good. This thing is a beast. Let me give her a quick little inspection. I'm gonna flip this back up. We're gonna do a little detailed look on the components that are inside. All right, let's take a look at a star of our show, a PNY RTX 4070 Ti. Nice and stiff in there. Could have thought of a better word choice there. Our 16 gigabytes of Kingston Fury Beast RAM. They put their own custom branding on the deep cool 240 millimeter AIO, looks nice. Our one terabyte M.2 under the heatsink and the ASRock B660 Pro motherboard. For our fan configuration, we have three intakes on the bottom, deep cool FS 120s, one rear exhaust, and two exhaust out the back. There's actually no fans in the front of this case. That's because if we look over the top, there's our power supply. So overall, we have a neutral pressure fan configuration, which is just fine. Now we gotta crack open the back panel and check out just how good the cable management is. Based on everything I can see, I'm guessing it's gonna be pretty good. 
Yeah, indeed. Here we have our one terabyte hard drive. You have your fan cables, GPU, motherboard power, front IO, uh, another power cord extension because there's an actual power in the back so you don't have to power it like from the front with the power supply being up there. Overall, very, very solid. Real quick before we go any farther, we need this peel. Love it. Hello, my friends. So before we get into the real juicy stuff, the gaming benchmarks, how does this thing perform for a $2,000 gaming PC? Let's talk about one of those really incredible features that light gaming PCs offers that nobody else does. So electronics fail sometimes, whether they're brand new, whether they're old, it just happens. And let's say you bought a pre-built gaming PC from them, and one day as you're sweating, you're just sitting there having a good old time, poof, something goes wrong and a piece of hardware has malfunctioned. Well, normally you'd just be stuck sitting there sending the PC back in, and for a few weeks you would just be staring at a black screen thinking about how you could finally climb out of silver if you just had your gaming PC here, but instead you had to send it out for repair. Yeah, not with light gaming PCs. So if you had the Anthem like me and you had to ship it in to get it repaired, they would actually send you another Anthem replacement PC for the time being while yours is getting replaced, that way you're not PC-less. They'll just instantly send you another one. So you don't have to have hardly any downtime without a gaming PC. Talk about customer service. Let's get this bad boy over here and I'll show you its final benchmark resting station. Now remember, this is the office laundry room gaming setup, so we got the furnace in here. It'll be a nice little backdrop. I can't lie, this thing just blacked out with this dark glass side panel looks so sick. Moment of truth. Yeah, baby. So I've already went ahead and obviously downloaded some games, some benchmarks, but it just came with the ASRock motherboard RGB software, a performance test, and our graphics drivers for the NVIDIA 4070 Ti. And you also get Windows 11. We're gonna be benchmarking with the Gigabyte 34 inch ultra wide, 1440p, 165 Hertz, and this beauty should rock 1440p and 4K, no doubt. While we're benchmarking games as well, I've kind of got this little small secondary monitor, not blocking any airflow, by the way, to see the different temps and uh, speeds that we have on our CPU here and on our graphics card. All right, jumping into Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, we're playing some kill confirmed 1440p ultra settings on an ultra wide monitor as well. Looks like we're sitting around 140 to 150 frames per second. Absolutely beautiful, almost hitting the 165 hertz maximum of this monitor. If we had a smaller monitor, we'd be hitting that no doubt. It's a, it's a beast. This thing is an absolute monster. All right, this game is notoriously pretty tough to run as well. So as the first benchmark, I'm really happy with this thing. I didn't expect it to perform obviously bad, but this is pretty badass. Now, if I wanted to, I could easily turn off shaders and hit 160 FPS to maximize this monitor, but I am very happy with Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. Notoriously pretty terrible game in terms of optimization and pretty tough to run on any gaming PC. Hogwarts Legacy time. We're going in at ultra settings here. We want to make sure that... Uh, we want ray tracing on? Yeah, let's go ray tracing on, why not? All right, inside of Hogwarts Castle, it's looking like we're getting 70, 75 FPS. Outside, we're getting even a little bit less, around 50 FPS. I absolutely love this game, I'll tell you that much. Inside the Defense of the Dark Arts, still around 50 FPS, 40 FPS, somewhere around that range. But overall, we're sitting pretty good, 65 degrees, CPU sitting at 52 degrees, everything's looking real nice. Let's hop into some Halo Infinite. Halo Infinite Ultra Settings. Now, not one of the most popular games in the world, but I'm a huge Halo fanboy. I even have Halo coffee mugs and dinner plates. Yes, my wife hates them. Almost exactly what we were seeing with uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, around 150 to 165 FPS, uh, which is basically hitting the max refresh rate of our monitor, which is awesome for an FPS game because I want to capitalize on that as much as I can. But uh, overall, Halo Infinite, a pretty tough game to run running very smoothly at 1440p on the 34 inch ultra wide at ultra settings. Up next, we're gonna benchmark Overwatch 2. I'm not a huge fan, but it's a pretty popular game, so let's check it out. All right, this is kind of a joke. We're getting about 400 FPS. This is like CSGO, you know, super easy to run. Actually, 420 FPS almost. Either way, I kind of just wanted to queue up and see what we would get, and uh, it's more than good, that's for sure. I think we should also run a quick Cinebench uh, R23 and let's see what kind of score we can get here. Temperature, 
looking like 50 degrees Celsius, maxed out at 77, maxed out at our 4.8 gigahertz uh, boost. 17,237, my friends. That is a pretty good score. But quickly, a couple more points I wanted to touch on is that they have a free 30-day return policy as well, which personally, I think that is really, really nice. Whether something happens to the PC or you just don't like it, you can have 30 days to return the PCs to them, no questions asked. And another thing with pre-built companies is sometimes it takes just a long time from the minute you click order until it actually arrives on your doorstep. Light gaming PCs processing time is currently roughly three to five days. Now, obviously that changes uh, based on a multitude of factors, but right now it's averaging between three and five days. Pretty damn solid. So that's it for the Anthem pre-built from Light Gaming PC review. I'm gonna go hop into some games, possibly some old school RuneScape, but probably gonna push it to its limit in Call of Duty uh, Modern Warfare 2. Thanks for checking this one out. I will leave the link to the Anthem and all of Light Gaming PC's pre-builds. Thanks for checking it out. We'll see you in the next one.